Hello there and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about chapter three in Introduction to Economics one. Consumers can spend as much as they wish for. The reason for that is the budget constraint. In economics, the budget constraint is shown by PXX plus PYY equals to I. This is an illustration of a consumer with a limited budget and only two goods to consume. Here two assumptions are important. First, the consumer has only two goods to consume and second, the prices are fixed and do not change. Budget of a consumer can be shown with a line like in the illustration. Firstly, budget line is a line and should be a line. Second, any change in income or in prices causes a shift in budget line. An income change causes a parallel shift, whereas changes in prices causes a shift that generally changes the slope. Consumer theory relies on assumptions and principles. There are four assumptions and five principles. The assumptions are first, preferences are complete, which is a consumer can compare and rank all the possible baskets uh, that he or she can have. Second, preferences are transitive, which means a consumer can substitute a good for another. Third one, uh, the consumers always prefer more to less, which means consumers are better off using more of a product. And the last one, the fourth one, marginal rate of substitution is diminishing, which means when consumers increase their choice of the other product, they are going to have to give up more of the first product. Another important concept is the indifference curve. It is a curve that on any point a consumer gets the same amount of utility or benefit. It represents different consumption combinations that give the same amount of utility. So what is utility? Utility is the benefit of a consumer gathered from consuming goods and services. Total utility is the utility gathered after consuming a good or a basket of goods. Marginal utility, however, remember marginality, is the change in the total utility after the last unit of conception. Marginal utility has a tendency to diminish. This means a smaller increase in total utility every time we consume a new unit. Let's say we are having hamburgers. First one, let's say, increases the total utility by 50 points. Second one increases by 40. Third one increases by 20. And fourth one increases by 5 points. However, after eating fourth hamburger, many consumers feel sick. And after that point, eating more causes harm. So. Eating the fifth hamburger causes our total utility to decrease. The law of diminishing marginal utility tells us that continuing on consuming a good gives us a less utility and at some point even a negative utility. So you may start your meal like the girl on the left but end up like the boy on the right if you consume too much. What we look for in macroeconomics is that both consumers and producers be in equilibrium and make optimal choices. A consumer's optimal choice is the point that the utility curve is tangent to budget line. At this point, a consumer has the optimal choice. There are other points that a consumer can continue his or her life, but they are not optimal. On the illustration, point E is the optimal choice. The consumer may be at F2, it is possible, but being on the point F is not optimal because 
it is a point on the U2 which represents a less utility value. Changes in income shifts utility function and budget line. Every increases in income causes a new optimal point to arise. These optimal points are shown in the figure by Q1, Q2 and Q3. Using these points, the income consumption curve is obtained. It shows the long run variation in optimal points. Changes in income may cause different shifts. Remember, inferior goods are consumed higher with low income rates. Likewise, when income increases, the consumption of an inferior uh, good decrease. So this is sh shown in the figure on the right. If one of the goods are inferior, the income consumption curve becomes negatively sloped. You may remember uh, that a change in prices cause a shift in utility function and budget line. When that happens, let's say price of a one good decreases. First, the substitution effect causes a shift from point A to point B. There is also the income effect, and that effect causes a shift from point B to point C. Thus, the new optimal point becomes the point C. However, income effect works in the opposite direction for inferior goods. The illustration assumes that the good which decreases decreased price is a normal good. Thanks for watching.